Uh, this is an inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, and today we're going to be talking about this entity, which is often confused, I think, by a lot of pathologists because of some historical naming problems. So let's start with talking about that in the past. Um, there was a term inflammatory pseudotumor that applied to kind of anything that was a, a tumor or mass that had um, some spindle cells and inflammatory cells microscopically. And then over time we recognized that some of these things were actually a uh, distinct neoplasm and they were renamed to inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. And uh, further studies showed that a lot of these tumors uh, have rearrangements of the ALK uh, gene, A-L-K, ALK gene. And uh, you can detect that um, by uh, both molecular testing and also on immunostaining. Um, over half of these will have ALK uh, staining um, in their cytoplasm. So the, uh, and, and more studies are evolving showing more, uh, more molecular abnormalities in, um, in this tumor. But the problem is, is that now, uh, because of the, the historical use of the name inflammatory pseudotumor, and uh, people understanding that that has merged into a new entity called inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, or IMT, a lot of times in, uh, I see people send in cases in consultation, and anytime they see a mass that has a lot of inflammation and some spindle cells, um, they'll say, well, I think it might be an inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, uh, because it, they think it's a pseudotumor, it's got inflammation, it must be an IMT. So I think the first step is to remember that inflammatory pseudotumor does not always equal IMT, and I personally don't like the use of the name inflammatory pseudotumor because I think it's it's fraught with confusion uh, historically, and uh, IMT is definitely a distinct entity. So let's talk about IMT. Uh, this is a, a nice bona fide example of IMT. It had ALK expression, and it was a, a relatively decent sized lung mass. And you can definitely see there's a lot of inflammation here. And so the inflammatory component is really important. That's, you know, the name says inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. But don't forget the second word, myofibroblastic. If you take away the inflammatory cells, there should still be a spindle cell tumor left in the background. All right, let's go to higher power and see what the players are here. So you can see there's a lot of lymphocytes, and um, in addition to lymphocytes, plasma cells are often common, and you can sometimes even see eosinophils and neutrophils, and they're scattered like this throughout the tumor, intercalating between the individual tumor cells. But if you subtract away those inflammatory cells, and in your mind, remove them from your view, and see what's left, what you should have left, is a prominent population of plump spindle cells with open vesicular chromatin in their nuclei, and sometimes they'll even have prominent nucleoli in the, in the center of the nucleus as well. And so you can see these nice, big, open nuclei. And they look myofibroblastic. Uh, they're plump and they often have kind of an amphiphilic, that is a light purpley colored cytoplasm. Okay, and if you do immunostains, these should stain with smooth muscle actin, and they're usually gonna be negative for Desmond and other stains. And then additionally, like I said, um, the ALK uh, immunostain is gonna be positive in over half of cases. So that's a problem too, is that there probably are some cases um, that would fit with inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor that don't have ALK expression. And again, this is a growing area where additional um, studies are showing that there may be other partners and other molecular events going on, aside from just a basic ALK translocation. And so I can add some links down in the video description below so you can do some additional reading on that. But this is the pattern of what you want to see. You want to see a tumor that's got inflammation scattered throughout. And again, here's some, actually a few, you know, neutrophils in here. If I can get the slide into focus. You can see there's neutrophils scattered in here. There are lymphocytes scattered. And, uh, and, but it, you have to make sure that when you take away that inflammation that what you're left with is a spindle cell background. So let's go to lower power so you can see what we have here. So these are kind of these long, kind of broad fascicles that are made of plump myofibroblasts. Yes, perfect classic example here of inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. Now these can occur in a lot of different sites, but the most common scenario is to see them in the abdominal or pelvic region, and they are more often seen in children and young adults. And um, there's some question about how do you classify them? Are they benign, are they malignant? Well, most of them behave in an indolent fashion, so uh, you could think of them as more benign, but there are a, a small subset of cases, probably less than 5%, that can show more aggressive behavior and metastasize. So we 
kind of think of this as a tumor of intermediate malignant potential still. Even though most of the, the cases behave indolently, there are occasional cases that can be more aggressive. And um, there have been some other things uh, described that are in this same kind of uh, category uh, in the abdominal cavity called uh, epithelioid um, inflammatory myofibroblastic sarcoma. They look a bit different than this. They have much larger round um, kind of epithelioid cells with big nucleoli, and they all have a unique pattern of membranous nuclear alk staining, and they behave very aggressively. So they're thought to be a different, um, a different entity than typical regular inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, but uh, it's a good thing to know about, and it's a relatively recently recognized entity. And again, I'll add a link down below that you can uh, do some additional reading if you like. So burn this into your mind as an example of what a, a real inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor should look like. Plump spindle cells, kind of uh, pink to light purpley blue amphiphilic cytoplasm, uh, big vesicular nuclei, and a, a bunch of inflammation scattered throughout the background. This particular case uh, was from, I think, a young adult, and it was a, a lung mass, and you can see out here we're in, we're in lungs. So this was a nice example of inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. Uh, let me see, I think we have another one here. And special thanks to my uh, dermatopathology fellow, uh, Ed Fulton, for pulling all these slides and, and uh, coming in early in the morning to help me get these videos prepared. So next time you see him at a meeting, thank him if you think these videos are useful. So here we are in the liver. And you can see there's the border of the tumor here. We've got a, a kind of a fibrous sclerotic border and some um, actual lymphoid aggregates out here. And then in the middle, we have a mass that's replacing uh, the uh, liver parenchyma. This one looks a little bit different than the last one. It's a lot more edematous, a lot more kind of loose and mixoid in between the tumor cells. But And when you go to high power, for sure, you can see lots of inflammatory cells there. But if you take those inflammatory cells away, what are you left with? You're left with these big, plump cells that have uh, open chromatin and prominent nucleoli. And these are a little bit more on the plump epithelioid kind of side than in the previous case we had seen. Um, I don't think they are atypical enough to fit into the epithelioid inflammatory myofibroblastic sarcoma um, entity that I mentioned. But these are these large, plump, uh, very vesicular nuclei, prominent nucleoli that you can see here. And then a whole bunch of plasma cells and lymphocytes and neutrophils in the background. So when you have um, a rich plasma cell infiltrate, um, one thing that could be in your differential that you could consider is uh, the group of diseases that are known as kind of IgG4 um, sclerosing or fibrosing diseases. And that's kind of a hot new topic that's evolving in pathology. And there's a variety of different areas in the body including the liver, the pancreas, and other places that can have these fibrotic and sclerotic processes with um, plasma cells. So you could always think about checking um, IgG4 levels in the serum and uh, doing uh, immunostains for um, immunoglobulin uh, G uh, and, uh, and IgG4 as well, if that's in your differential. But again, make sure you include ALK and actin when you're working up things in this differential. So another really nice example of an inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor and this one with a little bit more epithelioid looking cells. But if you, if you take the inflammation away, you're still left with tumor cells in the background. If you take the inflammation away and all you have are some scattered reactive myofibroblasts and um, uh, vessels and basically granulation tissue, that's not an inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor probably. That may just be granulation tissue or reactive uh, change. And I think that I, I see a lot of times cases like that that people um, suggest to be inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. And again, because occasionally these cases can um, behave aggressively, it's, it's not common, but occasionally they can, I think it's important to make sure that we don't call reactive uh, processes as uh, IMT. It's important to not make that, um, that mistake. All right, so that's a case of IMT from the liver. And then here's a very rare example. I often get questions from people, uh, since I do not only soft tissue pathology, but also derm path, I get questions from people, do you ever see IMT in the skin? And I'll tell you that the vast majority of cases of 
of supposed uh, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor that I've seen people call IMT that are in the skin, I do not believe are actual IMTs. I think they're either reactive changes, um, granulation tissue. Sometimes I've seen cases of really inflamed and kind of sclerosed uh, Rosei Dorfman disease in the subcutis. I've seen people suggest those to be IMT. So I've seen a lot of different entities that people have suggested to be or called IMT in the skin or the subcutis, but in my opinion, we're not actual true um, IMT. And so here's an example that I think actually really fits well that was sent to me in a, in a teaching, um, a teaching uh, recut exchange that I was in. And so you can see this is a pedunculated polypoid lesion and it's got a collarette of epidermis kind of scooping underneath it. And at first glance, one thing you would think about with this kind of pattern, and especially if, you, if you're told that ALK uh, immunostain is positive, as it was in this case, is you might think of epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma, which despite the name is not at all related to dermatofibroma or benign fibrous histiocytoma. Um, we now know that it has its own translocation involving the ALK gene, and it looks quite different though than inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, and according to some recent studies, it behaves in an entirely benign and indolent fashion. But this, uh, tumor when you go to higher power doesn't look like epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma. Instead, you see similar um, features to that first case we saw in the lung. You see these plump spindle cells with kind of a, a bluish purple light amphiphilic kind of color to their cytoplasm. Sorry, try to get in focus here. A little bit of loose myxoid material in between and scattered lymphocytes spread throughout these tumor cells. So these fascicles of plump myofibroblasts and then the scattered inflammatory infiltrate between is perfect for inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. And again, this case was positive on an immunostain for ALK. So I think this is a nice bona fide example of what I would accept as an inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor uh, arising in the skin of a child. And so this is a really good example also. But the other thing, like I said, you have to remember that ALK is not totally specific. ALK uh, staining can be seen in epithelioid fibrous histiocytoma. ALK staining can be seen in a subset of spitzoid melanocytic neoplasm. So in the skin, um, and also ALK can be seen, of course, in anaplastic large cell lymphomas of, not in the skin, but uh, usually of the systemic type. So there are a variety of other diseases that have the ALK stain. So ALK by itself is not totally specific, but it's a really helpful marker, I think, in these kinds of cases. And again, I think the, the pitfall is just to make sure that you, uh, you know, not every tumor with inflammation um, is going to be inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. So I think that you should, you know, keep this in mind always when you see a scattered inflammatory infiltrate in the middle of a spindle cell tumor, but make sure that you don't, uh, don't overcall it. And remember that the inflammatory cells are usually going to be lymphocytes and plasma cells. I think in this case, there's quite a few plasma cells in here but also you can see um, uh, eosinophils and neutrophils present in some cases as well. So this is uh, IMT. Okay, now here's an example of something that uh, might get called um, an inflammatory, quote, pseudotumor and, and might get mistaken for a true um, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. This is a polyp in the um, prostatic urethra, and so it was uh, removed with um, a TERP procedure. And if you look at this polyp, you can see there is a lot of inflammation and it is making a mass, right? It's making a polypoid mass. And there are uh, large kind of reactive looking uh, blood vessels in here. And again, a lot of inflammation. And so the appearance is, is really that of, I think, similar to granulation tissue. But if you take away the vessels and the inflammatory cells, I mean, there are going to be some scattered myofibroblasts left in there, but there's not really like a tumoral population of myofibroblasts. So these kind of reactive pseudotumoral uh, inflammatory polyps of the, the genitourinary tract have been well described and, and other kinds of things like this in soft tissue I see also. And the point is not to go into all those different entities, but to let you know that in my opinion, these tumors, um, although they may be quote pseudotumors, they may be making a mass, so a tumor in the, in the ancient sense of the word, a mass, but they're not a neoplastic proliferation of myofibroblasts. So even though they're making a mass and have a lot of inflammatory component, if you take away and subtract out in your mind, if you subtract out those vessels and the inflammation, there's really not much left other than a little bit of background, um, maybe reactive myofibroblasts, but there's not that prominent population of fascicular, spindled, plump, spindled, or even epithelioid cells that are myofibroblastic that we saw. And of course, ALK would be negative here as well. So don't confuse this for a true IMT.